Shalom. I'm going to start off by giving all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh. Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, and Kakwadash. Double lines to the apostles and those great millstone towards this truth. And salutations to the elect scattered abroad throughout the four corners of the earth. We're back here again in the Meta GMS. You know, with our um, open form, we just gonna go with the spirit, flow with, you know, just flow. You know, a few things to talk about, like the brother mentioned on um, the call, he talked about the, the, the gun confiscations that um has been erupting recently. As of what, seven days? They said how many mass shootings? I think somebody read seven, seven, my brother had did a video, seven days, seven mass shootings. Seven days, seven mass shooting. Let me see. Um, mass. I'm just putting mass shooting real quick. If anyone y'all got you no know, scripture, I want to open up. I got something. Yeah, I got something. Uh, Luke 11 and 21. It says, "When a strong man arms, keep keepeth his palace, his goods are in peace. But when a stronger than he shall come upon him and overcome him, he taketh from him all his armory wherein he trusted." That's heavy. When a strong man's um arms. Holdeth his what? Read that again. Huh. When a strong man armed, mm -hmm. keepeth his peace. Uh -huh. oh, sorry, it's, keepeth his palace. His goods are in peace. Right now, we know that Esau. Really, this is Esau's king. So th that that more more so pertain to Esau in these times because what's his blessing? His blessing is the sword. Now, Esau is going is going to really take these Edomites off because here it is. Their blessing is getting pulled pulled away from them. That's going to really tick them off. You know, and this guy is talking about um, you had this mass shooting in um Boulder, Colorado. You know, um, there's multiple articles on it, and now they're talking about he want an immediate ban on assault rifles. And these Edomites, they don't just buy one gun. Like a Jake would just buy one gun for home protection or some shit, right, or whatever. But these devils, they collect guns like Jake collect Jordans, yes. and that's a fact. You know what I'm saying? You ask about, you know, anything about the latest retros. Esau know about the latest guns, how to put it apart, you know, how, how, to, how to take it apart, clean it, put it back together. So that's his blessing. That goes back into um, the book of Genesis. Lord, we probably bring that out through the spirit. But get ahead, I. It says, but when, when a stronger than he shall come upon him and overcome him. Now, in this case, who's stronger than he? You got, you got the powers that be. Romans 13 chapter. All right, you got the, the, the elites that are the ones that are pushing forth this agenda because... Why are they confiscating the guns? Because they know that they're about to come down with some shit. And by taking away the assault rifles, because with those with those type of weapons, you you have you can have more of a mass casualty rather than just you know um uh, uh what do you call it? manually shooting at somebody. Automatic weapons, you know what I'm saying? So Esau want as as less resistance as possible when that time comes. And these Edomites, they in the spirit of of e um sending Egyptians against the Egyptians. You know what I'm saying? So they ain't, they ain't, they not about ready to give up their guns, man. So what they gonna do is put a, a, a block or how how freely you could just go in and get a background check to get a gun or whatever the case is. They gonna they gonna tighten that thing, man. Yeah. It says, when when a stronger than he shall come upon him and overcome him, he taketh from him all his armory wherein he trusted. You see that he take his his armory in which he trusted because. Really, who's blessing this sword again? Anybody got that real quick? Genesis uh, yeah. 27. Real fast. Genesis 27. 40. You know what I'm saying? Because that's this man's blessing, and it's gonna be it's gonna get it's gonna get real rocky out here with these devils, man. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? When they start when they really start restricting and, and pushing these gun reforms, reform laws. You got that? Yeah. yeah. Um, Genesis 27 and 40. Mm -hmm. And by the and by thy sword shalt thou live, and shall serve thy brother. Read up, read up a verse up. Uh, I start at thirty-eight. Yeah. All right, Genesis twenty-seven and thirty-eight. And Esau said unto his father, "Hast thou but one blessing, my father? Bless me, even me also, O my father." And Esau lifted up, lifted up his voice and wept. And Isaac his father answered, answered and said unto him, "Behold." Thy dwelling should be the fatness of the earth and of the dew of heaven from above. Mm -hmm. And by thy sword shalt thou live. Right, so his blessing is the fatness of the earth, all right, and by his sword shall he live. Now, Esau, Esau having, having the fatness of the earth, Job 9 and 24, the earth is given into the hands of the wicked. So this, this is his domain. This is his rulership. Like the scripture say in, um, in um, was the second Ezra's, that Esau is the end of the world, Jacob is the beginning of it that follows. So who will be ruling in the latter days? Esau, Edom. All right, and his technology is proof. His technology, his weaponry is proof that he are the Edomites, man. 
he perfect these things, all right? He, he, he's the one that, he got laser gun that'll shoot you from space, all right? And leave no trace of any anything. You just you just disintegrate right there, you know? The ICBM missile, that's the tall tale sign that this devil, you know, he his blessing was the sword. The ICBM missile, that technology that the Lord said in Isaiah 54 that he created the smith. The smith is talking about who? You saw, you know, the scientists, get it? By thy sword shalt thou live, and shall serve thy brother, and it shall come to pass when thou shalt have dominion, that thou shalt break his yoke from off thy neck. There you go. You know, by by the sword shalt thou live, and that's how Esau Edom have. That's how he was able to conquer all these lands. All right, by the sword, and it even it, he took it up a notch when he came over here with the Gatling gun, which it was, which is how he was able to slaughter Gad on a large scale. You know, and and, and just like these AK-47s, assault rifles, and all these weapons. Is what they're trying to take away. So when they do come in with that warfare and that combat, it'll be a less resistance. You ain't gonna have you ain't gonna have Jake's up, you know, not Jake's. So you saw anybody up on roofs, you know, shoot mowing them down. Mm -hmm. You know they don't want that. <laughs> you know what I mean, if y'all brothers want to land back, go right ahead. You know, yeah. say what you gotta say. I got something real quick. Mm -hmm. In Second Corinthians chapter two verse eleven, these Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of Satan devices. Yeah, that's right. Cause um, this 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 is the this was this was the plan from the, from the jump, okay? Because what Esau, which is the devil, he's um he's 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 um moving towards his you know his new world order agenda, all right? So he's getting ready to bring in his chip. He's getting ready to bring in his martial law, okay? So and it's so so basically, there's a lot of rights that they want to take from the people, man. Oh. From, they want to take a lot of these rights and the, uh, these amendments from them, so they won't be able to uh, uh, resist against the, their will, man. Okay, or to you know, fight back. So you know they have all these, you know these, these so-called mass shootings and all that, which is, which is all set up, all right? What for Esau to take away the gun laws or to take away this law, that law, so you people would be defenseless in that day. Okay, but well, we're not ignorant of Satan's devices, man. We, us brothers, in the know and it's true. We know what the hell is going on, man. Why? And I got another scripture. This is Revelation chapter four, verse twelve. Mm -hmm. It says, "Therefore rejoice ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth." It's like it says, "Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil is come down unto you." Having great wrath because he knows that he had but a short time. Yeah, that's and that's the whole point. You know, because Esau, Esau knows that he's at the end of his kingdom. Okay. So so he's gonna he's ready to go all out with his own new world order. Alright? And him locking the society down. He's ready to go all out. Okay? So he's ready to strip you of your rights, uh, have his concentration camps prepared. Yep. And you know he's he's just ready to be be a full out devil man because he don't have much time longer, you know. You want to say? Something? Yeah, yeah. I was going to say. Um, now when you when you look into the word advantage, advantage means to put somebody in a a condition or a circumstance that makes some someone more superior, and that's what he's doing. He, he's creating events and circumstances where he could could, could implement his own. Well, new world disorder, yeah. and um, but he's having trouble because we live in a time of um, um information, mm -hmm. and through social media, people are um waking up to a lot of different things or they suspicious of of the government. So you have you having you having trouble, which going to ultimately lead to you know him getting more aggressive. And they say you know you have a short time. So they deal, Esau, well, the lead of Esau on down, they deal with um, numbers and they deal with um, numer um, numerologies and they got the they, um, demonic high holy days. Astrology and all that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, can I ask something? Because you just said something that was kind of keen to me. But if you look at, if you analyze what they're doing, you see how they always talk about how America is all, all this great country, they fight for people's freedom and so forth. Mm -hmm. But what they really did was they did it by slaughter. Yep. And on, a, on an unfair advantage. That's how they got this land. Mm -hmm. So for Revelation 12 and 12 to come to pass, they have to make it the, an unfair advantage to the people. Nothing fair. 
They got a quick reset. It says um, uh, Dan, um, Isaiah 10 and 13. But he said, by the strength of my hand, I have done it. And my, by my wisdom, for I am prudent, I have removed the bounds of the people. I have robbed the, their treasures. I have put down the inhabitants like a valid man. So that's his history. So we know, we all know Esau's history, how he got down. But the way he did it, he did it in such an, uh, an unvantaged um, point. He couldn't be fair with the way he took everything. So they'll have you believe that the false pretense is that, you know, they, they did everything like a mono on mono, but in reality, they, they sabotage. They they um they, they weaken their, their opponent because they're not strong themselves. So he's trying to weaken his opponents, which is a, his own citizens, because he's a warmongering bastard. He loves war. He has to go to war with somebody, either another nation or his own people. He has to go to war. And all these things that they're doing is just for them to have the they, the two the two things that they're after is uh, the Second Amendment and the Thirteenth um, Amendment, your, your free speech and the, the, to be able to protect yourself. And that's the last of the last. Once they have those things, they can do whatever they want. You know, it says a little bit more. It says, "My hand has found as a nest the riches of the people, and as one gathers the eggs that are left, I have gathered all the earth." There was none that moved the wing or opened the mouth or peep. So he got in on an unfair advantage. Nobody could withstand his onslaught. You know? As bad as Gad and Reuben was, they couldn't take down Gad and Reuben by themselves. They had to do chemical warfare. Smallpox. They had to they had to use the Gatling gun. They couldn't go fight them on mano a mano because they, they're not built that way. They're dirty fighters. They're dirty fighters. But here's the, uh, verse 15. Shall the axe boast itself against him that he was with? Or shall the sword magnify itself against him that shaketh? As if the rod shaketh itself against them that lift it up. Or as the staff that lift up itself as if there were no wood. So the Lord is using you as a weapon to take down other nations. But that doesn't mean that you had the power to do anything. It was the Lord that was u using you. So... <laughs> Now the Lord is about to allow you to do certain things to certain people, but he's going to take that same advantage like we was discussing. Mm -hmm. When the wickedness is going up, that means the righteous is going up. Mm -hmm. So so you want to come full throttle with your, all your technology, all your great inventions to take us down so you can get back to that day of slaughter, how you started it all. But the Lord's going to come back to you with what? Spiritual powers. That's the only way. That was it. I got time. There's um, songs... 94 and 20. So the throne of iniquity have fellowship with thee, was framing mischief um, by, by law. Because um, we was talking about how Esau, he got to he gotta set up um, psyops so he could justify himself passing bills and bringing bills to laws. Because if he just pushed it out there on people too quick, there's going to be a mass rebellion. So they create circumstances that um so they could justify or, you know or that kill all out of chaos mm -hmm. you understand because that's what they could just say um he saw um like well Israel is the just because when you look at the word just you get that's we get the word justice the word justice means to administer the law and Esau will fall under um injustice which that means the law is not be administered that's why he's known as um, 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 he, a, a, a man of iniquity. Now, you look at the word iniquity. The word iniquity is where you get the word equal. Now, with something equal, that means that scale is balanced. So, when something's in balance, that's iniquity or unjust, unbalanced. And that's that's how Esau operates. He, does, he, doesn't, he doesn't deal with what is right or what is moral. He deals with imbalance and, and sin and everything that's in, um, that's injustice. Um, yeah, that's, mm -hmm. I got something. This uh, Habakkuk chapter two verse eight it says, "Because thou hast spoiled you many nations, all the remnant of the people shall spoil you thee, mm -hmm. because of men's blood and for the violence of the land, of the city, and of all that dwell therein." Yeah, and Esau spoiled many nations, okay? In the top. 
Um, mm-hmm. Let's have a group. Yeah. Yeah, Esau, he's the one who spoiled you many nations. All right? Starting with the nation of Israel, which you Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. But the time of him being spoiled is, 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 is to come. All right? Which is right around the corner. It says, verse 9, Woe to him that covereth an evil covetousness to his house, that he may set his nest on high, that he may be delivered from the power of evil. And that's what Esau do, man. He uh, sets an evil covetousness to his own house, man. All right? Here it is. Uh, Esau, you know, he hey, he takes away from his you know his own nation, man. Right here in America. All right? He tax you heavy. He put, uh, take away your rights. All right? Um, take away your wealth. And here it is, he's taking away, yeah, he's pretty much, you know, stripping you of your, your, your the rights you're supposed to have, all right, your amendments. You know why? For, for, for his benefits, towards his, uh, new, to set up his new world order, all right, to have everything on lockdown, to have everybody mm-hmm. under slavery under him, mm-hmm. okay? Now, since I don't know, mm-hmm. uh, now if you look into that word, have a cool for um, violence, mm-hmm. now the word violence doesn't actually mean, like, um, like, a, um, Crime or um, physical harm. Like look into the word. The word there in Hebrew is the word um, kamash, where that goes to the word injustice, which goes back to the break of the law. Where that where the break of the law goes to the murder and anything that's comprised of the law. So he's not only just guilty of um, murder. He's guilty of the um, of the whole law. Anything that's comprised of the law, he, he breaks it. I got precept. This is all um, Isaiah ten and one. Woe unto them that decree unrighteous decrees, and that write grievousness which they have prescribed, to turn aside the needy from judgment, and to take away the right from the poor of my people, that widows may be their prey, and that they may rob the no, it, said, it says to take away the right from the, um, they read that one more time? Yeah, it says to turn aside, it says to turn aside, from the top, from the top, yeah, Isaiah 10 and 1. Woe unto them that decree unrighteous decrees, and that right grievousness which they have prescribed. Now, we, decrees is interchangeable with laws. So he, 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 before things come into law, it passed as bills. Got it? Verse 2, it says, To turn aside the needy from judgment, and to take away the right from the poor of my people. Now, judgment is justice. So he turned aside justice, and he doesn't exercise the law of the Most High. He don't even exercise his own laws that he, he put it on the books. He goes against it. And that's what he do. Like everything he does when he passes certain laws, he always have um alternative motives. And sometimes it may seem like it's there to help the people, but it's really to break people. And or, or to have further um a grip and control over the people. Yeah, real quick, this is um Psalms 147, verse 19. It, said, it says, He showeth his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgment unto Israel. He have not dealt so with any nation. As for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise you the Lord. To land back what you're saying about the judgment and justice, ultimately what Esau took away from us was what? The word. The word of the Most High. The law, statute, commandment. How to govern each other. You know what I'm saying? How we must be. Because in, in, hey, in this society, you can't, you can't go to court on, on some trumped up charges, whatever it may be, and pull out your Bible and correct the judge and say, listen, According to the Lord of Most High, I should walk away from this. Right. You know, according to the Lord of Most High, I shouldn't be standing here right now. You can't do that. So the true judgment is found written in the scriptures. That's why the scriptures say, Woe unto them, meet death unto them that decree and righteous decree. Because if it's not if it's outside the laws of the Most High, you're dead. The Most High is gonna kill you. Because in the kingdom of heaven, guess what's going that's guess what we governed by? This. Yep. This is what's going this is what we're gonna govern by. We ain't have to write new laws in the kingdom. Oh, brother, you know, you shouldn't have did that, uh, you know, and then where's that in the scripture? Oh, it ain't there yet. You know, let's just put it there. No, everything is going to be here. It's going to be written out in what parts, man. We ain't going to be making shit up as we go. You know what I'm saying? The Lord's going to make us all righteous. And everybody's going to know. And all Israel's going to know, exactly. And there's even the heathens that are going to know. Unlike Esau, like how many uh, penal codes that they will pass and the average person don't even know what the hell, what the penal code is. It's slipping under the books. It's slipping under the books. And that's unrighteous. That's not, that's not right. Like if you go down, if you take the wrong turn and the, this got to the third, they will, you know, oh, um, you took the wrong turn, but there's no signs, there's nothing there. How, how should I know? You know? Yeah. Even the law had, there's a law of ignorance when somebody don't know. But here in this, this society, they don't show you no type of mercy when it comes to anything. If 
you don't know something, you have to pay a cost, mm -hmm. which is unrighteous. Yeah. You know? Because at the end of the day, the, the, the amount of money they're asking for, you can't afford it because you're poor. Yep. They don't go to a, your, um, the rich man's neighborhood and give them tickets for um, outstanding parking. They'll come to a poor man's neighborhood and give them tickets for parking near a hydrant, which mm -hmm. nobody's using the hydrant. Nothing happened. No uh, offense, no accident. No, no accident. But they show no mercy because they're not merciful people. All right? Yeah. Real quick, uh, Isaiah 29 and 15 it says, Woe unto them that seek deep to hide their counsel from the Lord, mm -hmm. and their works are in the dark, and they say, Who see it does, and who know it does. Just like what you're saying, you know, Esau be sliding all these shits under the book. Hey, this whole New World, NWO, New World Order establishment, it, it all happened under the tables, bro. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? We, we know because through the spirit of Yahweh Bashim Shah and the grace of Yahweh Shah, we got the eyes to see. But other than that, these people don't see. They don't understand that this whole cracks the nation um, implementation of people got to get it and show the, the you know all that all the other shit they don't understand that that's all part of Esau's new world order agenda right. but we see it you know what I'm saying so woe to them that seek deep to hide the counsel from the Lord and uh, um, who, who said I think you said it that um about his plans ain't going right mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying you said it earlier that his plan is, is fucking up because that's Job the 20th chapter eventually yeah, yeah. that's gonna happen like, yeah. you know what I'm saying yeah eventually that's gonna happen because Hey, you got hey the most I got whistleblowers and they call prophets. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We the we the we the, we the true whistleblowers, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? You saw guys whistleblowers, but we the ultimate whistleblowers, aka the the, the men um Ezekiel third chapter, Ezekiel thirty three, the ones that blow the trumpet, the watchmen. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah, being that you said that, mm -hmm. you know, his plans ain't going right. Um, this is Psalms twenty one and eleven. It says for they intend. It says for they intended evil against thee. They imagine a mischievous device mm. which they are not able to perform. Mm. Yeah. And what's that mischievous <laughs> device? <laughs> okay, that mischievous, <laughs> mischievous device is that whole new world order setup that Esau is accomplished or trying to accomplish. But it says which he's not able to perform, because why? Going back to Job twenty, man. In the fullness of his sufficiency he should be in what? Straits. A position of difficulty. Okay? So so how how the way, he, the way Esau, the so-called white man, have things planned out, the Most High is going to intervene, all right? The Most High is going to intervene, and how he's going to intervene? By bringing these plagues, right? The Most High said he's going to plague Egypt like before. This is the modern-day Egypt. So the Most High is going to bring destruction on the so-called white man's society while he's you know, pretty much trying to accomplish uh, enslaving the whole world with his new world order. Right? That's the Hebrew word from um, this mischievous device. It's a um, mazama. Purpose, discretion, discretion, device, plot, purpose, mm -hmm. discretion, device, evil. Mm -hmm. Strong definition, a plan. Usually evil, machine, mm -hmm. <laughs> machinish, like a, like a machine, a well oiled machine. Yeah. Sometimes good, uh, sec secondary, wicked, device, discretion, intent, mm -hmm. witty. Invention, lewdness, mischievous device, thought, wickedness. Mm, yeah, and so, and pretty much his 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 evil intentions that he's, you know, about to bring, man. And what what does the word evil mean? Eve meaning time, ill meaning bad. So he saw the so-called white man. He's 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 coming with bad times, man. Yep. All right. He's coming with martial law. What what once he take away your guns and you know and, and um enforce, you know his new laws, man. He's, he's going to have his um, Gurkha troops set up, his um, UN, you know, UN troops with their tanks on the streets, have everything on lockdown, uh, you know, shooting people down, not um, giving people fair judgment, you know, uh, uh, according to the law. It's, it's going to be a whole new world agenda, man. All right? He's going to try to get you people uh, with the vaccines, all right, implant, uh, the chip implant. So, so it's going to be a whole chaotic world, man, that Esau is going to try to come down come down with. But at the end of the day, us brothers in the faith, we're going to what? Believe on Yahweh Hashem Yahushua, because Yahweh Hashem Yahushua, he's the one that's going to deliver us you know, from that. And he's going to fight against Esau in that time. Fine. I got something to you. Psalm, Psalms 58 and 1. Do ye indeed speak righteousness, O congregation? Now, righteousness simply means to do that which is right. And it says, oh, do ye judge uprightly, O ye sons of men? 
Yea, in your heart ye you work wickedness. Ye weigh the violence of your hands in the earth. Now going back to the um the word there violence, the word there violence is injustice again. So what I said, you weigh the violence of your hands in the earth. Weigh means to judge. Cause we go to um first Samuel, it says, um, it speaks about through the most our actions are weighed. So it's talking about judging. And um so he judged, the way he judged is not according to the law. He, he, he dealt with injustice and he had power of, um, of the whole planet, but he still deals unjustly. And that's it on that. Luke 18 and 1, it says, And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought to always pray and faint and not faint, saying, There was a, there was a city, a, ju a city judge, sorry. It was in a city a judge, which feared not the Most High, neither regard him, regard men. And there was a widow in the in that city. She came unto him, saying, Avenge me of my adversary. And he would not for a while, but afterward he said within himself, Though I, I fear not the Most High, nor regard men, yet because this widow troubled me, I will avenge her. At least I'll be continually come she worry me and the Lord said hear what the unjust judge saith and shall not the most high avenge his own elect which cry day and night unto him through the though they though he he bear long with them I would tell you that he will avenge them speedily nevertheless when the son of man cometh shall he find find faith on the earth so that un that unjust um judge is Esau who don't fear the Lord and Jake is always crying for injustice but they, they, they don't only give him so much to go by and now when Jake cry for justice it comes with alternative motives and that alternative motive is what LGBTQ whatever you know the black man is thrown out pretty much out the picture so it's not really it's not real justice so the only justice is going to come is when Yahweh Shai comes, all right? Yeah. That's the only way we're going to get true justice, yeah. all right? We're not going to get it from the, our oppressor because he's the one that's bringing it. He don't care what, you know, what's going on with us if we can't eat this, that, to the third. But yet, he still has the, the audacity to act like he gives a fuck about you getting that jab, all right? He has, a, he has the audacity of you trying to keep a family intact. He's always disrupting something that makes us better. But then he turns around and acts like, like I'm for you. You know? And the only way we're going to get that justice, like I said, through the spirit of Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh is Yahweh Shai. And then Yahweh Shai is coming back. It's like the scripture says, the eye for an eye, two for a two. Whatever you've done unto us, you're gonna, it's going to be done unto you. And that's, the, that's true justice. All right? That's the true balance of everything. Okay? And right now, it's overwhelming wickedness towards the Lord's people. So <laughs> the Lord has to um, tally that up. And the only way he's going to tally up is you got to pay double. All right? All right? That was I got something. This is Job 18 and 5. Mm -hmm. It says, Yea, the light of the wicked shall be put out, and the spark of his fire shall not shine. Yeah, and that's what's, that's what's getting ready to happen, all right? The light of the wicked, which the light represents what? His rulership, the, uh, the rulership of the wicked, man. And who's the wicked? Esau, the so-called white man. That's about to be put out, man. The, the Lord is about to blow his candle out, all right? And how that's going to happen? By bringing destruction to America and, and taking Esau out of his rulership. It says, The light shall be dark in his tabernacle, and his candle shall be put out with him. The steps of his strength shall be straightened. Yeah, hey, the steps of his strength. All right? Oh, going, going back to Esau's whole New World Order agenda, man. All right? Because what? That's it, 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 every Esau's, you know, he 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 um thrives off wickedness, man. Okay? He thrives off wickedness. That's that's part of his strength. All right? His sword, everything that he's coming down with you know, with his new world order, you know, all his strengths he's getting ready to use, man. All right, but it says the steps of his strengths should be what? Straightened. 
that position of difficulty, you know, brothers was talking about earlier, which Esau, so, so Esau is not going to fully be able to accomplish his goals, his new world order agenda. Because the Most High is, is, is going to fight against him. Mm -hmm. It says, um, and his own counsel shall cast him down. <laughs> hey, his own counsel is going to cast him down, man. This new world order system is going to be a trap unto um, Esau. It's going to be a trap unto the so-called white man. All right? He, he should be snared in his own net, as the scripture said. And it says, um, it says, for he is cast into a net by his own feet, and he walk upon, and he said, and he walketh upon a snare. Yeah, so Esau, this 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 wicked system that Esau is bringing is gonna be a trap to him. All right? Cause the time, hey, his sins is gonna reach man, reach into the heavens, and what? Yahweh Shah is gonna bring that destruction upon him. All right? That's real quick, I got some um because you mentioned the, the candle being put out, right? From Esau, this is Ecclesiastes 12. And I start at the top, it says, Remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth, while the evil days come not, nor the years draw nigh, when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. While the sun, or the light, or the moon, or the stars be not darkened, nor the clouds return after the, after the rain, in the days when the keepers of the house shall tremble, and the strong men shall bow themselves, and the grinders cease, because there are few, and those that look out the windows shall be darkened, or be darkened. Those that look out the window be darkened. You know, just to, to land back what you said, because you know the light of the candle of the wicked is talking about. You know, Esau's illumination. His they refer to the Illuminati for a reason. Illuminati means the enlightened ones. Just like how we got the candle on the right hand side, the the, the lamp, the, like the words say, um, "Thy word is a lamp unto my feet." We got the word so we can see, but Esau got the. He got it too, but on the left hand side, and Satan is working with him, so Satan got Satan giving him that light. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Through the most high. Right. Satan, the spiritual demon Satan is giving him that light to see and do what he's doing on this earth today. But that time is coming where, you know, Esau gonna look out that window, which means his his future for the new world order, his visions, you know what I'm saying? It's gonna be darkened because which is gonna be ultimately in a, in a in a place where he's gonna be snared by his own devices. You know what I'm saying? Because his new world order is ultimately to to ensnare Esau, Edom, and the wicked of Israel. This is our deliverance. The New World Order ate it. This is our deliverance. Without without this shit even popping off and coming to pass, how are we gonna be delivered? Yeah, yeah. Um, Acts 14 says that, in 22 says that with much tribulation shall you enter the kingdom of heaven, yeah. man. So this thing must, this must happen for us to make it to the kingdom of the Most High, man. You know, Lord willing we be the elect. And you know, Esau, you, you, ain't, you, ain't you ain't gonna get past a certain point, man. This is, you, you damn near at the pinnacle almost of your new world order. When you start shipping people, people are like, the dollars crash, people are buying and selling with that RFID chip. That hey, we know that Yahweh Shah is about to come back. World War Three and we out of here, man. Hey, the scripture says um he that uh, he that digs a pit, he he's he falling for his own pit. Mm -hmm. So it's like uh, I forgot who's brother was telling me that somebody was digging a, oh, right, right. a, 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 a grave a, a grave shit. and the pressure for the idiot that <laughs> pull all the dirt on one side all came down hard on that one particular person and killed him. Uh -huh. That's just, that's Esau. He's digging a pit because part of his pit, part of his um, whole new world or the agenda is eugenics. He's trying to get rid of people. Now you wonder why we say the scripture says what it says about Esau Edom, how he's going to be utterly destroyed. Because he's doing, every act that he's doing every act that he, he, he presents he's intending to do harm to others. So that's why the Lord has said all these things about East, that particular race of people, that they're going to have no mercy, man, because they, they, they act alone. So he's trying to trap people up so he could be a god over them, control people's souls, and um, wipe out the majority of people so you have less people. Because all that's going to backfire on his ass anyway. He's going to be a, the first crop of slaves. <laughs> he's going to be the few, and he has to do build a whole nother world for somebody else. You know, all that treasure he has is going to be for nothing. That's going to be for us. All right? That's all our stuff. Something real quick. Good. Isaiah 24, 16 said, From the utmost part of the earth we heard songs. And that song is talking about the scriptures. That's why you have brothers in um, Australia, uh, um, Amsterdam, and all over the planet earth singing the same song that we sing. This is the song of Moses. This is the song of freedom. You know? 
the kingdom, it says, even glory to the righteousness. But I said, my lenience, my lenience, woe unto me, the treacherous dealers have dealt treacherously. Yeah, the treacherous dealers have dealt very treacherously. And that's, these people, they dealt very treacherously. But us not knowing anything, or just trying to destroy the whole structure of our family to, for us to be, this man is literally trying to destroy us. You know, he's dealing treacherously. What did, what did, honestly, let's be real. What did blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans did to the so-called white man? Really? What did they do wrong to them hey, well, to get treated that way? Hey, well, in, in, one, in one lifetime, if you want to, you know, go, get, go there. We had this. We we had this double slavery too. Right, but before you know that, we look. Our forefather Jacob, he he loved. He he gave love to Esau, so there was no there was no tension until this man made that act, and that's when uh, Amalek did that stunt. They were the first nation. So, but if you talk about here in America, our people never did nothing wrong to those people. Oh yeah, and this side, nothing. They didn't shit to them, but yet they get treated like the worst of the worst. And they still under like, and what Jake don't realize, in Esau society is still under attack. Mm -hmm. Like Esau, again with the Lisa Esau, they they do they do everything strategically. So they got it. They got it with with um they disarm Jake by um breaking up the families. So. You won't, you won't have boys growing up to be, you know, men and or rebellious men to their society. So they had to break up the homes, and so they could, that was their way of disarming them mentally and physically. And they're still doing it. They had, then they had the prison systems and, you know, making money off of Jake's in the prison system. So they're still, they're still attacking, you know, the tribes. Yep. I got something since you said that. Revelations 12 and 17, and the dragon was, and the dragon was wroth with the woman, and went to, and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which kept the commandments of the Most High and having the testimony of Yahweh Shai Mashiach. And that's that's going into the um, Israel. That's you know they actually believe, you know, like that they, they have this whole thing as you know, uh, the black Hebrew Israelites under Prophet Megiddo as being a threat. Mm -hmm. and, to, to what? All we do is teach the word. Unless they say the truth is a threat, which we know is a threat. But um, he's making war with us. He's trying to find counter uh, attacks against us and this word. Okay? Yeah, that was it. That was it. Okay, okay. I got some. This is uh, Job 21 and 18. Uh, Job 21 and 17. It says, how oft is the candle of the wicked put out, and how oft cometh their destruction upon them? The Most High distributed sorrows in his anger. Yeah, man, and that's what the Most High is going to do. Okay, the Most High, he's coming to put the candle, which we brothers is going into that, the light of the wicked is going to be put out, man. And the Lord is going to do that by distributing sorrows, right? What? Through his indignation, his righteous anger. And sorrow is going to come by what? A uh, great death. Um, yeah, great death and destruction that the Most High have ready for this place. It says, um, verse 18, They are as stubble before the wind, and as chaff in the storm carrieth away. Yeah. And what, what what's stubble in that? And what is stubble and chaff? You know, that's something left you know, after it's burnt in a fire. So, so, what's that fire that's going to come upon this place? That thermonuclear destruction, which is going to make the wicked, which is Esau, the so-called white man, that stubble and chaff, because they're going to be burned up in this place. Okay? And it says, verse 19, The Most High left up his iniquity for his children. He rewardeth, he rewardeth him, and he shall know it. Yeah, so, you know, hey, so, he, you know, these... these these crackers out here talking about uh, they 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 not responsible for slavery. No, the Most High lay up his iniquity for his children, man, and he gonna know it. And how is he gonna know it? Starting by us, all right, telling you devils that you know you're them same devils back in the reincarnation, and you're you're getting ready to be burnt up in that fire, and 
going into slavery. All right, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna know your judgment, man. The Most High is gonna let your judgment is letting your judgment be known right now. It says, um, uh, one more verse. It says, his, his eyes shall see his destruction, and he shall drink of the wrath of the Almighty. Yeah, so the so-called white man, he's gonna see, he's gonna see your destruction, man. You think this place is gonna go on forever? When you ruling in wickedness, um, when you, you know, when you just um, um, making, you know, continue making this place a lawless society, all right? Well, all, all, all kind of confusion and madness. No, your destruction is is, is not, man. You're gonna see destruction, and it says, it says, uh, that last part. It says, his eyes shall see his destruction, and he shall drink of the wrath of the Almighty. Right, it speaks about that, that cup in Jeremiah the 49th chapter around the 12th verse. Alright, that, that you're gonna drink of the wrath, that you're gonna drink of that cup, man. And that cup represents death, destruction, and it's gonna rep and ultimately it represents slavery because after you're taken down, you're gonna you're gonna serve a thousand years in hardcore slavery, man. Just like how we had to drink of that the cup of the wrath of the most high, but we had to go into slavery. Your time of slavery is, is next, Esau. When, when our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shah, comes back and deliver us, man, you're going into slavery under the nation of Israel. Yeah, right? quick precept. Jeremiah 25, verse 15. For thus saved the Lord, Yahweh Shemiah Shah of Israel, unto me, take the wine cup of this fury at my hand and cause all nations, all the nations to whom I send thee to drink it. Go ahead. You get to tell because it's his name. <laughs> oh, yeah. I gotta read them. Yeah. It says, verse um sixteen. It says, and they shall drink and be moved and be mad because of the sword that I will send among them. Then, then took out the cup at the Lord's hand and made all the nations drink unto whom the Lord has sent me. To wit, Jerusalem and the cities of Judah and the kings thereof and the princes thereof, to make them a desolation and astonishment and a hissing. And a curse as it this day. Mm -hmm. Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and his servants, and his princes, and all his people. Mm -hmm. And all that, and all the mingled people, and the kings of the land of Uz, and all the kings of the land of the Philistines, and Ashkelon, and Azza, and Ekron, and the remnant of Ashdod, Edom, and Moab. Uh -oh. <laughs> you say Edom? Edom, and Moab. <laughs> you know what? And the children of Ammon, uh -huh. and all the kings of uh, Tyrus, uh -huh. and all the kings of Zidon, mm -hmm. and the kings of the Isles, which are beyond the sea, Dedan, and Tima, and Buzz, and all, and all that are in the utmost corners, and all the kings of the Arabia, and all the kings of the <laughs> mingled people mm -hmm. that dwell in the desert, and all the kings of Zimri, and all the kings of Elam, and all the kings of the Medes, and all the kings of the north, far and near, one with another, and all the kingdoms of the world, which are upon the face of the earth. So that's all kingdoms, everybody that had a part yeah. on the downfall of our people, they're gonna have to they're gonna have to deal with slavery. Mm -hmm. Flat out. Because mm -hmm. the, the precept to that is what I got it. Psalms 83. Psalms 83 and I'm starting four. It says, They have said, Come, let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. For they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against thee, the tabernacle of Edom, and the Ishmaelites of Moab, the Hagarines, Gilba, Ammon, Amathai, the Philistines with the inhabitants of Tyre. So they got together to come against us. Now the Lord is basically saying, and I was back then and said, look, I told Jeremiah, go and tell them. You're gonna have to take drink of that cup. You're gonna have, you're gonna have to serve slavery. And the, the precepts of that is Revelation 13 and 9 and 10. He that leaves into captivity shall go into captivity. Uh, Revelation 11, what? 11 around ninth verse will tell you the nation was giving gifts one to another, and the gifts was us. Exactly. So you're all gonna have to pay for what you did unto the nation of Israel, man. Flat out. Joel, the, the third chapter tells you, point blank, period. You. No matter how much money you gonna the law is gonna want, the only recompense he's gonna want is you going to captivity. 
flat out. That's the only thing you can make men's right, man. Yeah. <laughs> and it, it tells you that in Joel too, like you just mentioned the third chapter, that that's why the tensions of war is being brewed up. Yeah. War this world World War Three is about to be is about to pop off for Israel's sake. Matter of fact, I might as well get it, man. Joel the third chapter because what these what these nations don't realize is that all of this is happening because the Lord ultimately loved his people. When you see when these when we see these bombs start shooting, blood start shedding, famine plagues pest. This is all yo. I, that's what you call tough love, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The Lord is going to show Israel that tough love, and then these other nations, man, they about to see how much the Lord really truly loved Jerusalem because Jerusalem, from the, he refers to us as a Zion, a beautiful and comely woman. Mm -hmm. We're still his at the end of the day. You know what I'm saying? We're his, we're his firstborn. We're his first. You know what I mean? We his first. Like you get your first, your first woman. And this society is all different, but in all actuality, you get your first wife. You take a virginity and this and that. You you love her. Y'all become one. You know what I'm saying? Y'all become one. And when she when you see that she go off and f up and get tainted, they get get you mad. Really, you're supposed to put her to death. But the Lord have mercy on us, man. So this is all um, Joel the third chapter it says, "But behold, in those days and that in that, in that time when I shall bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem." I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat, Yahweh Shaphat, and I will bring them, which Yahweh Shaphat means um, the Most High Judgment, Yahweh Judgment. And I will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. And they have cast lots for my people. And he said, and he said he scattered them. Mm -hmm. That's, you, had, you had different, um, um, you know, company, the British, Involved in slavery, you know what I'm saying? The, the, the um, so-called Jews, they funded it. You know, it was a, that's why it's known as a slave trade because it became um, a commodity. You know, the trial became a commodity. And if you do a Google search on corporations that became rich through slavery, you're gonna see a lot of different corporations that's still in um, in existence today. That's still major corporations, but it became great through the backs. And on the blood of the lost people. Yep. Yep. Verse 3 says, And they have cast lots for my people, and have given the boy for the harlot, and sold the girl for wine that they may drink. Yeah, what what to me, yeah, and what have ye to do with me, O Tyre and Zidon, and all the coasts of Palestine? Will ye render me a recompense? And if ye recompense me swiftly and speedily, will I return your recompense upon your head? Like they're they gonna make a deal with the Lord, like, look, um, we'll pay you, we'll pay, um, we'll pay the cost. Oh, right, like right now they're trying to get the, they, they, they talk, they're still talking about the um, reparations for, for Jake. Yeah. You know, from the Caribbean, everybody, all of a sudden, get reparations. But here it is, your, your economy is shit. Your money is not even worth the value. So you think you'll be able to buy your way out of the destruction of the Lord? That's impossible. That's funny. That, that is funny. You know, you know, I just thought about it because you said that. Mm. If if you saw what's to do that, right? Yeah. Guess what will happen? Super duper hyperinflation. Yeah. You know, I mean, imagine giving every single so called so called slave that was brought into the shows of America, mm -hmm. even a million dollar each. You know, you know how how fucked up that would devalue the dollar instantly. So you know, you see what I'm saying? And like, even if Esau did that. He would be doing it with evil intentions yep, yep. to crash the dollar even more. Yep. Not saying that he gonna do that, but if they, if they if they was to do that, best believe the minute that that print press start going off, that's when the dollar is gonna ain't gonna mean shit. So a million dollars gonna buy your ass a loaf of fucking bread, mm -hmm. just like it did in um Germany. <laughs> you know, but um verse five, I'm, I'm gonna pass it after this. It says, but ye have, but ye have taken my silver, and my gold. And have carried them into your temples, my goodly, pleasant things. The children also of Judah and Jeru and the children of Jerusalem, have ye sold unto the Grecians, aka the Edomites, that ye might remove them far from their borders. You know? That's a point, guy. Yeah. Come on, I got something to back up what you were saying. This is uh Jeremiah 51. I start from 3 down to 5. It says, Against him that bend if let the archer bend his bow. And against him that lifteth up himself in his brigadine, and spare ye not her young men, destroy ye utterly all the hosts. Yes, yeah, so the Most High is going to build these arm, um, the arm, the armies of these different nations to what shoot their missiles against America. All right, 
That's why it says, against him that beneath, let the archer bend his bow. An archer is what? Someone that shoots a bow and arrow. Now that bow and arrow right here, it represents the nuclear missiles and the silos. The silos would be the, um, the, the um, bow, and the missiles would be the arrows, okay? And these nations, mainly Russia, okay, they're going to shoot their missiles on America. It says, thus the slain shall fall in the land of the Chaldeans. Yeah, the slain, meaning the dead, they're going to fall in the land of the Chaldeans. What's the land of the Chaldeans? Right here in America. Okay, because what? The Chaldeans uh, were, the, were the ancient witches and, and warlocks, okay, back in Babylon. And America followed after the same customs. Now, everything here in this land is, uh, is, is all witchcraft. Or in, sat in satanic worship here in America. So this is the new land of the Chaldeans. It says, and they that are thrust, it says, and they that are thrust through in her streets, it says, for Israel have not been forsaken, nor Judah of his power, of, of it says, of the Lord of hosts, though their land was filled with sin against the Holy One of Israel. Yeah, so so Israel is not forsaken, okay? So America is gonna be destroyed. So the Lord, you know, uh, pretty much, you know, take His people back. All right, starting with the elect. Okay, so the Most High is gonna, um, like the brother was going into this, this, this upcoming war. The Most High is is is, is bringing this war for Israel's sake. All right, because the Scripture says Israel is not forsaken, man. Know that, no, even though sin was filled in our land, the Lord is still gonna have mercy on His people. Okay. Yes, I'm going to get. Um, this is limitation 2 and 19. Arise, cry out in the night, in the beginning of the watches, pour out thine heart like water for the face of the Lord. Of the Lord. Now, the night represents the end um, of each uh, society. Because you have, you have um, a, a morning, that's the beginning of, some, of that day. Then you have a noon, and noon is is when the sun reaches peak and then after everything after that that's when um the sun slowly starts to decline and you enter into the night and you're going into a new day and that's what's happening right now we enter into a new day and that new day is um uh, when your house shall rule and you know israel being the kingdom so it says um in the beginning of the watches for out thine heart like water before the face of the Lord. And um, we're doing, we, we point our hearts and we out there like pushing the most high's word and saying the thing that the most high want to be said. And it says, um, lift up thy hands toward him for the life of the young children that faint for hunger in the top of every street. And you became men as new babies and need, needing to be nursed. And that's why we, we do shows, so you know, for the hungry children, the hungry, the hungry, the hungry sons, spiritually sons. So you know, we're feeding you the word. That's it. Being fathers and fatherless, because mm -hmm. we've been a people robbed and spoiled. Uh, Sirach ten and um, eight says because of unrighteous dealings, injuries, riches. And riches are got by the sea. The kingdom is translated from one people to another. And when always when you have a translation of power, it always become a violent act. Because those that's in power would never want to give that power up. So right now what we're seeing because of the because of the history that was put that was here in America, in the shores of America, the bloodshed that was taken upon the Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, which we all we all stated the reason why there is going to be a World War Three, so that way the Lord could settle beef that He had with the other nations, and for the bloodshed that was they have cast on the earth, what they did unto us. So the translation of power is taking place right before our eyes. Okay, although a lot of it is smoke and mirrors because Esau is trying to be, control the opposition, but the Edomites they can see they clear as day that they losing their kingdom. They losing their kingdom of heaven and they they know it. Right? They know it. And it, with this news with this guy, what he's planning to do, take away the people's rights. I, I don't know why I saw it at Salakia, but I think I saw something that said to the extent of they they want um, Biden wants to pass a bill 
to have the Supreme Court to allow cops to come to people's house to take away the guns. If they do that, that's a clear cut sign of you, this kingdom lost. The, no more rights, no more nothing. They lost. It's fucked up because the rulers of this kingdom is even doing it to their own citizens, man. <laughs> I, you know, it's funny because it's like, yo, this is your kingdom. Shouldn't y'all just all enjoy your kingdom together? Now he don't give a fuck. And it's like the Lord created Babylon the Great to have so much laws and so much um, things so, to be difficult for it, for it to, uh, to be taken down. All right? And that's why you see this translation is that's becoming more violent. You know, as we as we going, because people are, this is the most violent place. You have London, England, and the most of European nations. The cops only were walking around with guns. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like we was talking about earlier about the um with how they treat people over here and uh, Canada and those and so forth. How great you see how easy it was for them to just to translate to this some type of new world order. But America, the, the one the one bill that America has that's a thorn on the, the elite side is that the right to bear arms. Because they know that's going to be a violent transition. So they're already they're putting in books to do what? To take that away from the people so that they could just completely rob the people. So, But the, what they fail to understand is by them doing that, that's interacting with the prophecies of the Lord. So now the Lord is going to violently take this shit from them. Because what? Babylon the Great said what? It's going to be destroyed by violence. Thus with violence... Uh, that great city, Babylon the Great, is going to be destroyed, man. Okay? So, hey, man. Now, how about Shem Yashai has some, some, something special for this goddamn place, man? That's right. All right? That's all. This is all um, Isaiah 19 and 1. The burden of Egypt, behold, the Lord rideth upon a swift cloud, and shall come into Egypt, and the idols, hey, what was that talking about? The Lord didn't ride into a swift cloud with the, you know, into ancient Egypt. It's talking about modern day Egypt, man. America's modern day Egypt. All right now, I was watching a, a special on History Channel. You got the you got um three obelisks set up in New York City. One in um I know I know for sure one in um in Central Park. I think they call it the Cleopatra's Needle. Yep. And there's two more. All right, there's two more. Um, I, I believe it's blocks away from each other. And they was getting into it about the architectural structure of how it was built. They, when they when they pinpointed it on a the map, they, they put a straight ruler next to it and said, it's it's almost a straight line, but it's not straight. So they were trying to get into a mystery as to why it's not a straight line. Like, why it's not a straight line? It was like, surely the masons who built this place knew why they didn't make it a straight line. When it's, when the middle when the middle part of this, um, where the obelisk is set up, is off just a little bit. Now, automatically, I kind of knew where that was going already, and then lo and behold, it did. It went, it, went in, it went into the constellations, Orion's Belt, all right? Orion's Belt, if you look up at the stars, if you're familiar with, you know, looking at the stars, you got the Orion's Belt, you got three stars that's always next to each other, and the middle one is just slightly off. Now, they compared that with the Pyramids of Giza. You have the Pyramids of Giza, which is a line the same exact way, yeah. the same exact way, yeah. and that was fashioned after the, the stars too, yeah. the Orion's Belt. Show you that, which Orion goes back with, with um, to Osiris and all these, you know, the Greek gods of Egypt and so on and so forth. That's why the scripture says, what it says in Revelation 11, chapter 8, verse, that the dead bodies shall lie in the streets of the great city, which is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt. You know what I'm saying? America's Egypt all over again. They do, this, they do the same exact things that the Egyptian did. I mean, Esau, Esau is the ultimate culture vulture, man. Yeah, yeah. Straight up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it says, the Lord, excuse me, the burden of Egypt, behold, the Lord rideth upon a swift cloud, which is talking about the chariot, and shall come into Egypt, and the idols of Egypt shall be moved at his presence, and the heart of Egypt shall melt in the midst of it. And I will set the Egyptian against the Egyptian. We're talking about, again, Monday Egypt is America, so the Americans against the Americans. And the Lord is doing that. He's brewing tension in the air. Gun sales went up. Gun prices went up. You know what I'm saying? Now they, now they want to confiscate the guns. So now what, the, what that's going to do is going to drive, is going to give people the, the, uh, a scarcity mindset on having guns. Now when you have a, when you, when there's a scarcity or something, all right, it, it can bring panic, anxiety, you know what I'm saying? It, it's, it's a play on the mind. You know what I'm saying? So when they start saying that they're going to start banning assault rifles and eventually handguns or whatever, now 
it's gonna be scarce to purchase it. So now people are gonna be all panic mode. They're gonna they're gonna be they're gonna be holding dearly to their guns now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, thank God I got my gun before it's too late. Anybody try to take me out? Hey, people are gonna be defending, trying to defend their they weaponry, man. Yeah, yeah. These damn devil got guns in their showcases and in their houses and the places that are that are legal to have guns or whatever. And people know about it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and at the end of the day, that's Esau's blessing. He gonna fight uh, teeth and nail to try to protect what's his, man. Yeah, Charles, Charles Heston, the guy who played Moses. Mm. I think he went to one of those, uh, man, one of those meetings. And I forgot the name of the the, the, the group, but he said at the end of his meeting, he said, well, uh, "You got to pry out my dead, cold hands." And he was pointing, you know, he had his yeah, rifle. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's the attitude of America, the American average American person, people. Yeah. You, you gotta kill me to get this off of, off of me, mm-hmm. and that's the that's the t- where the tension even brews even more. America's already divided now more than ever. You have states that said fuck it, let's take the mask off 100. percent You got other states that still touting. You know, like there's a lot of confusion. Yeah, but, those, those same states you just mentioned mm-hmm. are gonna be the same state that's not gonna give up their guns easily. Yep, because it's what it's Texas, Tennessee, Florida. Oh, Atlanta, Georgia, I mean Georgia, which guess what? That's what happened in Georgia. Georgia is what a, a red state, but now it just became blue state. So now they're gonna try to get rid of the guns. So that tension is is just high as fuck. And people are like um, oh, um, Sabah has said New York got strict gun laws. So the people in New York can't just go out. You're never gonna hear some mass shooting taking place in New York because it's mad strict. So they're gonna ha- they're gonna model a lot of other states be like other states that don't the crime is and New York crime is fucking sky high. Even with fuck rifles, mm-hmm. you know. So hey man, the law is doing a marvelous work, man. Yeah. Tension is brewing. It's beautiful, man. It's gonna be like the crazies out there. That's just, that's just, I gotta watch that movie again. But that's how it's gonna be. It's gonna be like the fucking crazies, you know. Right, right. Congo says. And I will set the Egyptian against the Egyptian, and they shall fight everyone against his brother, and everyone against his neighbor, city against city, and kingdom against kingdom. And and that's what the the the, the tension, the class wars. You know what I'm saying? People, it's just people fighting against people in general. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's in um the uh, second verse. Second verse yeah. fifteen. Second verse fifteen and fourteen. Woe to the world and to them that dwell therein, for the sword and their destruction draweth nigh, and one people shall stand up to fight against another. Mm-hmm. And swords in their hands. The modern day sword is a gun. Alright, the modern day the go uh, so, um so modern day gun sword is the gun, handgun, pistol, assault rifle, whatever. You know what I'm saying? They gonna be up in there up in arms fighting against each other. For for what? For there shall be sedition among men. Sedition is uproar against the government, mutiny. Mm-hmm. Good. And invading one another they shall not regard their kings nor their princes, mm-hmm. and the course of their action shall stand in their power. Right, so they're not going to regard their governors, their law enforcement, the mayor, anybody. That's the kings and the princes of that, that of whatever region you set over. The presidents, yep. law enforcement, any type of law enforcement, the military. I mean, you know that movies when things really hit the fan, hit the fan? You got the military that was set up there to take, like they got the show called Containment. I don't know if y'all have seen containment with that one black, that one Jake, that one Jake dude. They had the military contain a certain area, and I think it was Georgia too. I think yeah, it, was it, was Georgia, it was Georgia. It was Georgia, right? Yeah, the they, CDC they, was involved. Yeah, yeah, CDC was involved, and they had to contain a particular area. At the time, whoever was in there had to stay in there. Yeah. And then you had military people that got stuck in there because, again, whoever had to stay, whoever was in there once it was contained had to stay there. So you had military people that was stuck in there, and guess what? They they lost control eventually, and they had to start. Fighting with the people that was in there, you know what I mean? Some took off their damn military shit just to look yeah. like a regular person. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That was CW. That was regular, that was regular news. See, that, that, was regular. that was a good show, actually, oh, yeah, bro. That was yeah. a good show, baby. It's on Netflix. It. It's on Netflix. If anybody's interested, that show's still on Netflix to this mm-hmm. day. And it's about a what? A disease breakout. Yeah. Go yep. figures. It says, I met, it says, I match a desire to go into a city and should not be able. See? that We seen a little glimpse of that early um, 2000 when this thing... Hey, yo, 2000 was a, was a great, it was a great year, man. Everybody felt the, 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 um, the chill yeah. in the atmosphere. You know what I'm saying? The, the chill, and that was nothing. Yeah. That was nothing. The Lord, the Lord just saying, yo, props. I'm about to get ready to come back. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. People started getting scared. 
You know what I mean? People was like, you know, oh, what you gonna do? What you gonna do? I know you talk about this stuff. What you gonna do? Don't worry about what I'm gonna do. What are you gonna do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? They was talking about certain places, certain places. You can't go certain places. They was talking about shutting out certain bridges and having checkpoints and all this. Now, we can see how they're going to do that. If you don't got the, the craxination, then you can't travel. You're going to have to provide proof that you've been craxinated. Oh, you know what um, Anybody from New York that went to Rhode Island? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they got fucking, stuck up they, there. They got shit. stuck up there. They, people, Military. The, the people go actually go over there and try to get rid of them because they didn't want people to go, you know, from another state, from another state. Right, right, right. That was the vision right there. Like, what? Well, hey, people had them license plates. Yeah. You got New York plates and you in Rhode Island. Like, uh, they everybody watch you through the blinds. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? People snitching on each other. Nah, it's a new cycle. Oh, it's good. Yep. People snitching on each other. Fucking um, kids squealing on their parents. Mm -hmm. That took place. So you, we all got a glimpse of it. It yep. says, uh, but because of the pride, the city shall be troubled and the houses shall be destroyed and men shall be afraid and men shall have no pity upon his neighbor. Now the scripture said pride go before fall. That's why this kingdom is falling down. This is the proudest country ever. The scriptures talk about that in Obadiah, how proud Esau is, man. How he say he's going to be like the most high set. Hey, the Lord is doing this to jack you damn devils up, man. And everybody that went on ahead and followed again, followed along with the so-called white man if you're Israelite, and you followed along with Esau, the most high to jack you up. This is, your, this is your time to get effed up, man. The men that repented and turned to the Lord, that, hey, Lord, I'm going to say our, because we hope we part of that number. That was our time to get feel the, the heat, the affliction, and the fire. And it ain't over yet. You know what I'm saying? But we understand why we're getting judged. Unlike this, unlike the world, they about to catch all types of shit. And then we ain't gonna, we, we ain't supposed to fucking feel sorry for them. Fuck them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, fuck them. We ain't supposed to feel sorry for them. A woman can't feed her children, you know what I mean? She ain't got this, she ain't got that. And you chose not you chose to be a single mama. You chose that. You chose that lifestyle. Now it came back and bite you in the ass. Yeah? It says a man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, but shall destroy their houses with the sword. Yep. And spoil their goods because of the lack of bread. So when one na one neighbor run out of food, he got to feel you know feed his uh, his wife, his complaining ass wife, you know his three bum ass kids and all that shit. He gonna lose his, he gonna lose it <laughs> and go next door and find out what this nigga got. Yeah. You know what I'm saying with a gun. You know what I mean? And if, if this guy don't got a gun, then all bets are off. He's spoiling his goods. Yeah. He's taking everything he got. Yeah. And if he do got a gun, he gonna meet you at the door with a gun, put a bullet in your head, man. Yeah. And the neighbor's gonna see it, and everybody gonna be on edge. You know what I mean? Hey, man, it's gonna get bad out here. Yeah. Yeah. And it says, and for great tribulation. Yep, trouble. It is gonna be tribulation, and it's called Jacob's trouble. All right, Jacob's trouble. Trouble and tribulation is the same thing. With much tribulation, I enter the kingdom of the Most High. Good. That was it. All right. I got another one. Second Ezra six and yeah, six and twenty four. It says, "At that time shall friend friends fight one one against another like enemies, mm. and the earth shall stand in fear with those that dwell therein, and the springs of the springs of the fountains shall stand still, in the third hour and the three hours they shall not run." So you're gonna have great tribulation amongst people that's familiar with each other. Your so-called friend that you used to like drinking with, so-called friend like clubbing with, but they can't do that no more. Your so-called friend like you, certain things that you people find yourself doing with each other, all that that uh, fraudulent friendship is gonna come to an end when real trials and tribulations are gonna take place. Cause it's about to get real out here, man. They talking in this, we on, what, in March? Imagine how, how bad it's gonna get, because they're, they're setting the stage. Well, what's gonna happen? Well, you know, under Trump, we wanted the military to go out there and uh, just give out the, the max. And now, according to their calendar, I gotta look at it again. I don't know what, what schedule they on. They want all hell to break loose by the summertime. So if nobody can defend themselves from a mob of people that's trying to take their food or take whatever. Then you asked out. You gonna trust in your government? Right. It, 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 what they were saying it was a, a Brazilian strain out here in New York. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's why. This, that's why when them, them devil said the 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 bovid the bovid is here to stay forever. You know what I'm saying? Because they they gonna continue to do this shit, bro. It's gonna be an ongoing cycle. This is total yeah. control, man. Yeah. Total control over the people, bro. I could tell y'all niggas went away mask. You know, went to go, went to come and get tested, went to shut up, <laughs> yeah, yeah. went to not gather, went to gather, went to stay in the house. That's that's what they all, they've been salivating for this moment their whole life, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? 
Yeah, dog. And these people are like fucking, they sheep. So they're gonna follow whatever they say. They're not gonna question nothing. And if you do question it, they're gonna throw those buzzwords at you. A conspiracy theorist. Terrorist. A terrorist, a domestic terrorist, and so forth. To discredit um, your, your argument. There's no more such thing as a way people can speak as adults anymore. You gotta just shut up and listen to what we say. You know, they started this shit at 9-11. Now they, they took it to another level, man. So, you know, we living in some, some great, terrible times, for real. <laughs> That's all for that one I got for you. Like, right now, they got a, um, a, a pandemic of confused mania. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. like you have um, people with gender identities. Like, it, you got to be political correct what you label, label people now. All, even though the most I only created two genders, now you got like fifteen different genders. Sure. Then you have, sure. yeah. Then you have like, um, you know, women with feminism that adopt the idea of feminism. Then you got homosexuality, and then they have a whole um, uh, homosexuality movements. You know what I'm saying? It's so it's so much confusion. The, the morality is at an all time low. It, it have it have to be the end. It has to be an end. Because if, if this place was given another 50 years, even five years, the, 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 the great wickedness that will grow from, from what is going on right now, it will be terrible. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So the most side is going to have to put a, um, a stop to it. Yeah. I got something. Matthew 24 and 22. Except those days shall be shortened, there shall no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days are shortened. So the most is gonna you're gonna shorten the days because you know you know the way things is right now is grievous you know and the most is suffering but I have to see this you know but the most he's gonna send his son Yahusha to um to put an end and flip things right side back up how things are supposed to be by putting the elect you know in position and and administer the law. And bring back order in this world. Right. Um, real quick, um, Proverbs twenty nine sixteen. When the wicked are multiplied, transgression increases, but the righteous shall see their fall. Mm -hmm. uh, like what you said, you said the, if this place was supposed to go on another five years, bro. Forget about it, man, because Esau is gonna do what? Yeah. Um, um, what did the scripture say, man? I, I was holding it earlier, I think, um, Isaiah, that he spread himself like a green bay tree. He oh, spread his wickedness. Psalm, mm -hmm. like, Psalm, oh, Psalm 37? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah, Psalm 37, yep. yep. 37 and 35. Yeah, you got that out. You know what I'm saying? Because, hey, the way, when the wicked are multiplied, multiplied transgression increases, but the righteous see the fall. So, <laughs> the Lord definitely coming back for us to see this damn bastard devil fall, man. Right. That's right, bro. Right. And, uh, and, and, you know, like certain plants, you know, you grow them, you can't grow, grow them with other, you know, plants, because that plant sometimes sends runners to, like, to the um, other other plants and kill off the roots. Right. That's Esau, his wickedness. He got a little runner, running roots, dove in into everything, trying to kill everything that's righteous. Right. Anything that Everything that the Mosai said is unacceptable. Esau trying to flip it and say, "No, it's nothing wrong with doing it. It's okay to do it. We gotta adopt this new world of thinking." Well, the Mosai already oh. set the law as a standard to um, how we we're supposed to conduct ourselves in this earth. But Esau, he wants to he wants to flip it. I got something. Daniel seven and twenty five. It says, and he shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws, and they shall be given into his hand until a time and times and dividing of times. Right, so everything Esau changing, like, that's what I said, is a, is a confused mania pandemic. But you think you get the, the, um, um, the, the, um, the, 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 the so called holiday, um, April Fools from? It goes back to when they changed up the calendar and people were still recognizing the cap the new year to come in, you know, during the springtime. And they they call those the April Fools. So he's so he, he's all about changing things up and, and causing disruption to the natural order of life. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 
Uh, Isaiah 24 and 4, it says, The earth mourneth and fadeth like away. The word, the word, um, um, September, me, if I don't say me, seven. It means seven. But how does September fall on the ninth, oh, yeah, ninth, ninth of the month? Yeah. You know? And you look at the word October, you get the word at. Yeah, the eight. We get the word eight. And that falls on the tenth with the with the tenth, right? Yeah, yeah. Same thing with November. November. The way with nine. Nine. And that falls in on the eleventh. The eleventh <laughs> month. Like, December is ten. Yeah. <laughs> like everything everything is, is off. Yeah, yeah. You know, everything's off with you know what I'm saying? The timing, the year, you know. And 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 it's like people are so confused, it's like it, it, you can't even talk to people about common sense no more because yeah. it's uh, they're so gone. Yeah. yeah. It says the earth mourneth and fadeth away; the world languishes and fadeth away. The haughty people of the earth do languish. The earth also is the foul under the inhabitants thereof. So the earth is the foul. Something, something is polluted. Uh, uh, the foul is polluted. You know, it, it, it's it's um, unclean. And that's what Esau done to this earth. It's all it's unclean. You have you have mass oil, um, oil spills. You know what I'm saying in the water. Um, um, marine life getting caught up in plastic, swallowing plastic. You know, um, swimming to the shore and dying. You know, because everything is um is is polluted. It's defiled. Respiratory problems at an all time high. Mm -hmm. You know, obesity is at an all-time high. Mm -hmm. Because there's no nutrients in, 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 in the food. So people's brains keep signaling to keep eating because your brain's telling you telling your body it needs nutrients. So instead of getting nutrients, they, they're so more calories and calories and calories. But who's to blame for that? Esau. You understand? Because the earth is defiled. So be because they have transgressed the laws. You have the law, one law of the land sabbath. You know, you give you give time, you know, for the, 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 the land to rest. Six years, you know, you work the land, the seventh year, you let it rest. You know, so now you have you have land with weak, a weak immune system. So it can't defend all foreign pests. So they had to put pe um, pesticide. Well, plants have their own immune system to fight off pests or anything that's um, attacking the, um, the health of the plant. Said, change the ordinances, broken the everlasting covenant. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the curse devoureth the earth, and they that dwell therein are desolate. Therefore, the inhabitants of the earth are burned, and few men left. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what's happening now. The earth, you know, the, the earth, the earth is, is just it, 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 it's so bad that you know, pretty much, you know, we need to deliver it as soon as possible. You know, more kids, excuse me, more kids are being born, you know, with mutations and birth defects. You know, who's to blame for that? Esau. You know, why are these things happening? Because the laws are not being exercised. There's one scripture I'm looking for. Give me a second, brother. Give me a second. One for some, there it is. Uh, second Ezra 4 and 24. And we pass away. I'm sorry, that's not the one. Like, you, know, you got you got people dying, you know, at the age of fifty five from cancer. You know, which is one of the number one killers right now. Heart disease and cancer. Fifty five is usually the time when a person retires, you know, they enjoy the the fruits of their labor. But fifty, 50 between fifty and fifty five, there's no chance you're going a person's gonna survive. You know, because everything's so toxic. You know, everything we do is toxic. The food, like the like the the food we eat off of is toxic. The food we eat is toxic. You can't you can't escape it. You know, the, the the water that you you bathe yourself in, the water that you consume, everything is toxic. So everything around us is toxic. I need the other one. Um, mm -hmm. Second is two and thirteen. Go ye there. Go ye shall, sorry. Go and ye shall receive. Pray for a few days unto you. That they may be shortened, the kingdom is already prepared for you. And it says to, to um to do what to pray, you know, 
like, just like you know, you got the um, a lot of these women when they're trying to get their weight, they'll go to the Esau's court system and they and they'll they you know they'll file a petition and then you know you get a visit from the the sheriff and you get served. Well, that's what we put a file a petition to the Most High and pray and and you know file grievance of the things that are taking place on the earth and ask the Lord to destroy this place. Yes. And, the, and the, the sheriff that's going to come is yeah. Yahweh Shah, yeah. yeah. and he's going to he's going to serve this place. <laughs> okay. The, the, the scripture I was looking for it says um, the earth. Oh yeah, there it is. Salak, yeah, it's fine. Mm -hmm. Second Ezra four and twenty six. Then answered he me and said, The more thou searchest, the more thou shalt marvel, for the world's hasten fast to pass away. You're right. So the earth itself. Want this destruction? That's how bad it is. It's gotten to the point where the planet Earth itself is crying and begging the Lord to destroy. That's why remember that movie, um, The Happening, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. with um, Marky Mark. Yeah. And it was a, it was a cheesy movie, but it was good because the Earth was fighting, building up immune system to fight off people, the, the, the people, the, 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 the virus of the Earth, which yeah. is the people. You know? So, the, oh, the scripture says in Job, I believe. That's the Job is one of Job in the fifth chapter, but Job in the twentieth chapter said the earth also shall rise up against thee. So mm -hmm. the the planet Earth itself is gonna spew you out, and that's full Esau Edom, because if you say it's absolutely true, bro, mm -hmm. the plastic animals are fucking choking on plastic, freaking eating uh, GMO crops, destroying the whole immune system. They got fucking GMO. The Monsanto said. If a seed goes into another farm, it pollutes that farm, defiles yeah. that, and they, they then they're gonna say that oh, we, it belongs to us because the um the, the marking into it. Mm -hmm. So that they they claiming things that's not even theirs. Oh, your man um the gates of hell bought over like a hundred thousand acres. Well, to say a flock if I'm wrong, but he bought thousands of acres of land out of all people. Why are you buying? Why is he buying farmland for? You know, he wants to block out the sun. The man wants to block out the sun. He want to do that Mr. Burn shit. And people seeing that he said his hands is every fucking thing. He wants you to eat synthetic meats. So you want to know why the earth is going to fight back? Because it's tired of this shit, man. Everything is tired of it. The animals are tired of it. The, the, the people in the right mind are tired of it. The trees are stressed out. You know? The trees are growing fungus. All, over, all around the borders of the tree. Yeah. Who's to blame for that? Esau. That's why when Esau goes down, there's going to be a, reno a renovation of the earth. But first, what must come first is um, demolition. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the way the Mossad is going to demo this place is, you know, through nuclear fire. And then going to reconstruct this place. You know, having um, Israel underneath Yahweh Shah and we're gonna build it and have the nations build it. You know, we're gonna sell the nations to build it. Right. We ain't gonna do nothing but something. just enjoy the kingdom. This is Isaiah 14 and 5. <laughs> the Lord have that's who you are, right? You <laughs> <doing it>. <laughs> <laughs> the Lord have broken the staff of the wicked and the scepter of the rulers. He who smote the people in wrath. What was a scepter? A scepter uh, or a staff is something that a king used, you know? And um, that's what represents um, royalty. And the most is breaking that. So, in other words, Esau is losing his power. Because his main power through deception. As long as he keeps people in deception, the more control he has over them. Mm -hmm. and, but now people, you know, the, the, the regular um, Joe, Schmo. Joe Schmo, Ray Ray, and Tom Heen, you know, got an idea about, you know, not to trust Esau injections. Exactly. You know, and, and, you know, they're like, I'm not taking it. Yeah. So, you know, that that's messed up that it's um they're disrupting their plans. That's right. It says verse six, he who smote the people in wrath with the continual stroke, he that ruled the nations in anger, is persecuted and none hindereth. Mm -hmm. The whole earth is at rest and is quiet. They break forth into singing. Yeah, the fir trees rejoice at thee. And the earth is going to be in peace. Because when Israel comes into power, there's not going to be any more wars. 
it's not gonna be any more, you know, um, of death for Israel. You know, we, we're gonna be in peace. But um, right now everything is 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 in chaos. Everything's in confusion. People are getting sick. People die. People are depressed. People are on drugs to fight depression. You understand? But in the kingdom, ain't no Israelite gonna be going through depression. Every every Israelite is gonna be, you know, in peace and in a good space, happy. You know what I'm saying? Because everything's gonna be perfect. It says, yo, it says, yeah, the fir trees rejoice at thee, and the cedars of Lebanon saying, since thou art laid down, no fellers come up against us. All right, a fellow, a fellow is refer, represent towards a, a lumberjack. A guy that goes down and you down trees, you know, and and you know that's Esau. He goes around trying to take everything down, you know, destroy everything. He's like this, you know, a, a, a toddler going through it. Their terrible, terrible tools, having a field day, drawn on the wall, breaking everything. You know what I'm saying? That's what Esau's doing right now. He's like a kid, going, like a toddler going through their terrible tools. So the most side is gonna spank him. You understand? Yeah. Uh, yeah, that was the point on that. Uh, um, you good guys to call? Oh, I got something, I got something. Psalms 95 and 1. It says, Come, it said, Oh come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto him with songs. For the Lord is great, a great God and a great king above all gods. And his hand are the, the deep places of the earth, and the strength of the hill, hills is, is his also. The sea is his, and he made it. And his hands formed the dry land. Come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our power, and we are the people of his pasture, the sheep of his hair. Today, if you, if you will hear his voice, harden not your heart. And as in the provocation and in the day of the temptation in the wilderness, there was another one I was looking for when the, the sun and when the earth was happy, it was singing to the Lord because he took down Esau and Edom. I just can't I just read that. Isn't that, wasn't that what I just read? No, no, there's another one. It's in the Psalms. But the only way the earth is going to be in a joyful noise is when Esau has been taken out of power, period. Right, because like the scripture says, no fellow's gonna come against me. You, rather, you, if you consistently attack something, that's stressing it out. Uh -huh. You know, that's, right. that's why there's a land savage, so you don't stress out the the land that you're in. Everything needs to rest. You know, this man of just he, he abuses everything that he does. He touches mm -hmm. man. Oh, and um, and the only reason why the most I set up Esau to show you. Um, this order and, and, what, and what happens when the law of the most have not followed out you know excuse me and all the confusion that comes you know from not you know exercising the laws That's mm -hmm. Proverbs 29 and 2 when the righteous on authority the people rejoice but when the so when the righteous on authority people rejoice because you know you're going to be in a good space you know, we're going to be in peace. Cause what comes to keeping the laws of the Most High? Blessings, peace. But when you break the law of the Most High, the opposite, you know, you get you get um, curses and, and misfortunes. Mm -hmm. So it said when the righteous and authority, people rejoice. But when the wicked bear rule, the people mourn. Right, when the wicked bear rule, the people mourn. Because you're not going to, you're not, Esau overworked everything. And everybody's going through a depression because Esau is he's the devil, you know, and the most side is going to um, bring them down. I found what I was looking for. Psalms 98, and I saw that too. Yeah, remember his mercy and his truth towards the, the house of Israel and all the ends of the earth have, he seen, have seen the salvation of our power. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all the earth. Make a loud noise and and rejoice. Sing sing praises. 
sing unto the Lord with a heart, with the heart and the voice of song, with the trump, with the trumpets and the sound of the corn, cornet, make a joyful noise before the Lord like the, the king. Let the sea roar and the fulfillment thereof, the world, and they that dwell therein. Let the, let the floods clap their hands, let the hills be joyful together. Floods don't have no hands to clap. So the spirits of the world is going to be in joy that the Lord is going to finally bring justice. It says, Before the Lord, for he cometh to judge the earth with righteousness, shall he judge the world and the people with equity. Mm. Wow. Huh? No, no, yeah, he no, he, bring. He's going to bring back the balance like it, it, the world needs to be in. And the only way he has to do it is by the violent act. All right, the last, the last catastrophic um, event that took place where the people of the earth um, didn't do what the Lord said, he destroyed the earth with the flood, okay? So even the, the planet earth who has a spirit of its, has a spirit of itself, it needs to be rejuvenated. And the only way you're gonna get rejuvenated is by the same thing, the same way we're gonna get rejuvenated is by that fire. That's the only way the Lord is going to make it right. And the earth itself is immortal. It can't be destroyed. So it needs to be cleansed. All right? You got something? Cool. Yes, you already wrapped up. You got nothing. Well, then I ain't on top. You got anything you want to close out with? No, nah, we go. Um, well, um, what's that? Um, Can you ask these 12? Let's hit a conclusion. Uh -huh. Oh, okay. Let's go with that. Uh, Ecclesiastes 12 and 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear the Most High and keep His commandments. Yeah, because like everything we were talking about is because um, we see in what happens when you don't, you know, well, on both sides, what happens when you don't keep the laws of the Most High? We see when Esau, when Esau don't keep the laws of the Most High or the wickedness, and we see what happened with us when we didn't keep the laws of the Most High. We came under some... The suggestion of Esau. Well, go ahead, read it again. Huh. Right top. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear the Most High and keep His commandments. Mm -hmm. For this is the whole duty of men. Right, so our duty is to um, serve the Lord and to do the things that is um, well pleasing unto the Lord. For the Most High shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. <laughs> there you go. That's right. So with that, we're gonna close, and we're gonna say again, all praises and glory to Yahweh. Until next time, shalom. Shalom.